Welcome everyone. It's Monday, January 13th edition of Living Life. You know, right now in December, it is spiny lobster season here in California. And because I'm a fisherman, whatever the Pacific Ocean gives me, I will go and capitalize on it as much as I can to eat as the best as I can, whether it's fish or lobster or anything in the Pacific. So what we do is we drop down these nets um, in a certain area where you feel like there's lobster and we put a bunch of bait in these cages and then the lobster crawl into the net. Now they have these big open holes and so they could go in but they could also go out. That's why it's called lobster fishing, not trapping. And what you do is you try to pull these nets as fast as possible up so that the lobster will not go out. Well, we did really, really well this season and I was coming back with many, many lobsters. And you know, who doesn't like lobster? Do you like lobster? I mean, some people don't, but most people love to steam it, put it in, you know, butter and just eat it all day. But let me tell you, as all good things are, as all good food is, after a certain point, man, if you eat like a million lobster, you're going to get sick of it. So you start looking for prime rib and other things. And that's basically what I was doing with these lobsters. I wasn't satisfied with them anymore. You know, Jesus in a similar way was saying to the disciples, there's this food that I have that you will not get sick of eating. Let's see what kind of food Jesus is talking about here today. John chapter four, verses 27 through 42. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. So in this juncture of the passage, what's going on is Jesus ministers to this lady, and he highlights the fact that he is indeed the Messiah that she's looking for. And she is so amazed because Jesus knows everything about her. Uh, she tries to wiggle around uh, some vague information and Jesus says straight up, no, I know how many husbands you've had. <laughs> I know what you are doing. I know what you're thinking. And she's just like amazed. And she's coming to realize, indeed, this may be the Messiah. Indeed, this may be uh, the person who's going to give me living water. And so they're going through a lot of ministry time. And uh, now Jesus is going back to his disciples and the disciples are witnessing and observing all this. Now, just a quick timeline. If you look at the passage, passages before, Jesus meets this woman around noon. Okay, so that's roughly around maybe lunchtime for some of us. 
Maybe they had some breakfast earlier on. Maybe they didn't have any food. You know, Jesus and his disciples, if you read the scriptures, they don't even know when they're going to eat. But Jesus is probably ministering throughout the day. And right about now, it could be uh, mid to late afternoon. And the disciples uh, say in verse 31, we, Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. So Jesus is basically saying, I know it's time to eat, but I am so full right now. I am so full. I am eating something that you guys don't know about. I am eating the fact that I just ministered to this lady who did not know the Messiah. I am ministering to this lady who really didn't even know what true worship was. I'm ministering to this lady where her eyes are being opened to the one and only God. Do you not see how utterly excited I am that I am seeing a person who was in captivity of information and, and various things about me. And now it is being opened. Her eyes are being opened. Now she's being liberated. And as she is being free and she has the ability now to embrace me as the Lord and Savior of the world. Can't you see that I am full? Oh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. You know, being a Christian, there's so many great things. You know, there's fellowship. You know, and we just said, you know, there was worship, and worship is amazing. Church and activities of the church and fellowship and all that, it's so great. But I'm going to share with you one of the greatest joys of being a Christian is doing the work of God in advancing God's kingdom. You know what he says, Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Now, what is this work? It says in verse 35, don't you have a saying? It's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. This work is seeing someone who does not know Christ, does not understand who Jesus really is, and for us to share who God is and this person coming into salvation in the name of Jesus, accepting Jesus and knowing that Jesus is truly God and Savior of this world and this person having salvation. That is how we eat spiritually, folks. Isn't that amazing? You know, I've come to realize in all the things that I have done that after a full days of work of ministry, and especially when one person comes to Christ, that is the most joyous moment that I've had in a long time when somebody comes to Christ. You know, it says, you know, in the scriptures that there is a banquet and a celebration that's going on when one person comes to Christ, all of heaven rejoices, correct? Right? Correct? Even in Ezra, when people of captivity came out of captivity and into Jerusalem and into this connection with God, that's when there was rejoicing. There's rejoicing when that person that God goes after, that one lost sheep, and that one lost sheep comes in to the salvation of God, then they're rejoicing. You know, have you experienced that joy of, of seeing somebody come into salvation? Man, that is food. That is food that nobody really knows about unless you come into Christ. First, we experience that food when we have Christ in our lives, the bread of life, but then we also get to give that food and we see this food continuously nourishing us, not only when we receive Christ, but when others receive Christ as well. You know, recently this Korean church has been reaching out to our community. And what I've come to realize about this community, especially here in East Los Angeles, the history and the culture and the tradition, many of them are Catholics. And for some reason, because I'm inviting them to this Korean Christian church, they're coming on in 
Hispanic people worshiping, and some of them are coming to Christ. Lately, I've heard someone say, Pastor, our whole family is on the side of Christ now. Do you know how overjoyed I was? That is food, my brothers and sisters. So today we covered what Jesus is talking about, about this food. This food that Jesus is talking about is doing the work of God, advancing God's kingdom, specifically here in evangelism. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of things that you can do. The first thing that you can do when you're evangelizing is share. Share your experience of Christ. That's one of the more powerful things that you can do. Jesus did this for me. This is how I feel Jesus. This is how, how, I know, how I know His power. This is what He has done in terms of allowing me to feel from death to something that is so alive in Him. You know, share something like that. Also, you know what I want to encourage you guys to do is maybe you guys are shy or you lack knowledge. Take an evangelism class or look up, you know, even in YouTube, Christian Ways I Can Evangelize. There's so many resources out there that will teach you and equip you to evangelize better so that you can continue to do the work of God. So with that, I would like to pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that our food is not just to eat, not just to eat your word, but also our food is doing your will in advancing God's kingdom through evangelization. I pray that you would give us a desire and a willingness and a hunger to evangelize that many would come to know Christ. Give us the way, give us the way how to do this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.